part two. I had to go put on a load of laundry and put on a program for my son that he was very animate about watching because he didn't want to watch golf with his dad anymore. So I'm back. Um, what I was just sharing was around purchasing Kim Hargrave's patterns. So highly recommend her patterns in many ways because it's beautiful. Um, but if you are a new knitter like myself, who are still developing those pattern reading skills where you, you don't always know when to infer what the directions are saying. Um, for me right now in my knitting journey, I am more of a uh, please give me explicit instructions on what I need to do and not just uh, assume I know what to do. And her patterns are definitely written for those who are much more experienced knitters at reading patterns, not necessarily more experience in knitting in itself, where, you know, I, I feel pretty confident in knowing how to knit and purl and maintain my tension um, when knitting a garment, but where, um, where I have areas of growth is knowing what it is I'm supposed to do with directions. Sorry, there's someone else. There's always someone. That's why it's hard to do this uh, technique, but I'm gonna keep trying to plug along. So anyway, <clears throat> as I was saying, I really do um, like the patterns, but what I'm hoping is that I can find a better way of learning how to read patterns and learning how to eliminate some of the guesswork because doing a Kim Gar's Kim Hargrave's pattern for example there is instances where there's some guesswork and you have to do like this like okay so you're gonna do this but if I do that it's not gonna look like the picture so maybe if I keep doing this then that's what I would do sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't so I've knitted um one hat one scarf and one sweater by Kim Hargraves. And I did this the hat first so I can become familiar with it. Did not like the hat. Kim Hargraves is a uh, designer who does not knit in a round. She is a designer who definitely believes in that the ability of constructing a garment into to a, taking pieces and constructing into a garment. There's my words. So uh, what I found in knitting the hat, the hat is called Fog. Um, it's in the gray book, which came out in, what year did this come out? This came out in, let's see, 2017. So there's a picture of the hat. I don't know how well you can see that, but it came out in 2017. It is, uh, it was a simple design and I, I know myself. So that's why I was like, oh, you know what? Let me read the pattern. Let me become familiar with this process because this was my first book that I purchased, even though I was inspired by Taylor, um, the pattern in the fall book, but it wasn't available for purchase at the time. So gray was the first one that arrived and I just spent too much time staring at the yarn, at the pictures and the pattern came that book came around my 41st birthday and my husband gave me yarn money um, as a gift. So I went through that whole entire pattern book, making a decision about what yarn I wanted to purchase with it. And I went on to Drops, not Drops, excuse me, Wool Warehouse and realized that Drops yarn had a similar construction as the rowing yarn for most of the patterns and that it was half the cost. So I could either spend thousands of dollars and purchase the yarn or I can do a budget budget friendly approach because in my mind at the time, this is an example of being an inexperienced uh, knitter and crocheter. At the time, I thought it was a really good idea to just purchase all the yarn for the patterns because I felt to justify spending, because that book was $22, and to justify spending $22 on a knitting pattern book that I needed to knit all the designs. That was what I had thought in my head. So I went through the book, went on Wool Warehouse, bought a bupkis amount of yarn, including this drop soft tweed. 
um, where the label is all a little disordered. And I purchased this yarn and many others with the goal of making every single pattern. And I was very um, careful about it. I made sure I, I did the math for the stitch quantity. I did yarn, I went to the um, yarnsub.com and I was able to make sure that the, the drop yarn I was buying had the same um, fiber in the same construction. So like there's some yarns that are S-twist and there's some yarns that are roven and some yarns are blown, like all that stuff. So I was really like, I spent hours uh, researching, taking notes, making sure that I was really diligent, diligent with this whole process and purchased a book quantity of yarn. And for some reason, I put a pause in that because I was working on shortly after my first first birthday. There was a, um, a knitting along with uh, Kim and Jana, and I did a Isabel Kramer um, pattern, the Ding Dingley Doe, which was a great pattern. But I should have purchased uh, yarn for it because I wanted to use yarn that I had in stash because I had felt so guilty about buying such a massive amount of yarn. And all the yarn I bought from Wool Warehouse just did not go what, what I had envisioned for the Dingley Dell. I wanted that to be a summer garment. And all the yarn I purchased from Wool Warehouse is stuff I would wear in a fall or winter months here in New England. So I went ahead and... Um, searched through my stuff and I found a really nice cottony yarn that paired well with another yarn and so I made that and then I made a um, excuse me another Isabel Kramer um, pattern it was a cardigan I don't remember it started with an M but I don't remember how to pronounce it um, I suck at pronouncing things uh, hence what I call the knitting needles which again can't remember it how to pronounce it but anywho uh, so then that cardigan happened and then the school year started. I'm a teacher. Uh, so I just didn't have time to really get into a lot of the Kim Hargraves pattern until I saw one of my coworkers. She was wearing this beautiful cream sweater and it was peeling. And she's one of the nicest people I ever met. And I really enjoy working with her. And I was like, you know what? I would like, I would like to make that sweater. Um, and I would like to fix the pills in her sweater so I was going back and forth how I can do that and so I borrowed the sweater from her and I went through all my patterns and I opened up one of my Kim Hargraves books it's called uh myth 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 no myth it's called myth and the pattern is called Hollis and it's a beautiful high neck um pattern I wish I had it out right now but Anyway, super, it seemed pretty uh, simple. I was like reading through it. I was like, oh yeah, I can do this. Oh yeah, this is easy. It's a bottom up. You start off with this beautiful garden um, garter stitch. Instead of doing a one by one or two by two ribbing, you did a garter stitch. It was beautiful. And then you had a little ribbing. And so you do, you do do some ribbing, but then you have a garter stitch, then you have stockinette, and then you have all this different textures at the top of it, and you have these decreases. And then on the sides, because it's a split hem, you have this cool little decrease on the side to have some like waist shaping um, as well. So not only do you have neck and shoulder and back shaping, oh yes, you also have waist shaping. So a lot of beautiful, but it, it's... Um, the way that she wrote the design, you see these cute little X's that that ladder up. It was really, it, it came out really nice, but you need to know how to seam. And this comes to my second part of my journey. So my first part of today's journal is about my love for my yarning room, my yarn room, and how novice I still am, even though I think I know a lot, because I went ahead and I'm just whipping this up. I, I got through the ribbing with no problem. And I did both the front and the back at the same time. I get through the stocking that had a little, little, little issues here and there as I was doing it on the shaping, but I figured it out. Um, Got to the top. It's still going so well. Cut crushing it. I'm like, God, I feel so good. I'm amazing. And I get the arms. I did the arms with like that. The, that was probably the fastest knitting I ever did. So I am feeling so good about myself. Now it's time to put the whole garment together. This is where I'm faced with who I really am as a crafter. 
And the reality is I can't sew. I have been taught how to sew by some brilliant women in my family that have sat down patiently to explain this whole technique to me. And for some reason, I, when it's time to put the stitches in, I struggle. Now I can cross stitch. I have made some beautiful cross stitch that actually look like the words or the picture. It comes out the exact way it's supposed to be. Now get me wrong, the first time I cross stitch, it was not um, up to par, but the more I did it, the better I got at it. So I know how to cross stitch. I know how to do a basic seaming things together, but um, most of my seaming and making garments has been using the crochet method where you crochet and you have this internal um, hem. Well, I, as a person, I really don't like to fill the the seam of a garment like right in this this particular sweatshirt for example i can feel the seam there and i don't know why it bugs me sometimes so i don't really enjoy that feeling or whatnot but so that's why i like the mattress stitch and that's one of the seaming things i know how to do and i feel a little bit confident in it and i use it for crochet so i'm like oh i can totally do that the issue is with knitted garments unless you do for me Unless I do a savage stitch is where basically you don't knit or purl into um, the last stitch, uh, either at the beginning of the round or the end of the round, depending on the pattern. I personally like to knit the entire or implement the pattern expectations through the entire row. And then if I'm doing a savage stitch, I just slip the first stitch and then knit down the line. And I found that it gives a cleaner edge for me whenever I do that. And so when I attempted to do the mattress stitch, for this one because I wanted it to be seamless it did not the way that the fabric bunched up here it just it wasn't clean so I had to undo it and try again I was able to seam it up the sides and I was like well how do I want to seam it and so then I'm emailing the designers for Kim Hargraves I'm looking on the internet I'm like well how did people seam it did you start up here did you start um from the body and then work your way up and no one had a clear answer everyone offered some really helpful um suggestions but there weren't wasn't like a clear like when you are doing this pattern you need to seam it this way whereas the Kim Hargraves team they they shared what they would do and I was like well I tried that and it didn't work for me do you have other suggestions and they're like no not really <laughs> so I had to go back and forth in doing this and what I learned from all of that was that if you're not in a flexible learning space where you don't have distractions going on where you can give something your full concentration, you can probably implement the expectations better. And that is what I got out of that Hollis sweater because I was in such a rush to finish it. I knit it, that was a garment, I knit it like that. It took me two weeks to knit it all together. What took the longest was seaming it all together. And so, and I was, what, what, oh, what got me even more frustrated is that the seam was fine on all parts of the body except for the left sleeve. I could not get it to fit in properly. I even got the collar up the way I wanted. The collar came out gorgeous. The, I finally got the seams on the body right. I finally got the seam on the right one right. But then when I was doing the left, it just couldn't get it together. And when I think back, now it's been a few months since I've knitted that, because I believe that was my September, October project, if I recall correctly. When I think back, I should have paused and not have rushed the process. And so that was, I, so I decided to take a break from making Kim Hargraves patterns. And I realized that I don't have all those skills yet, the skill being seeming. So my hope um, between then and future Rachel is that I will have an opportunity to take a class about how to seam knitted and crochet garments because I can knit I can crochet but I can't seam so I really am hopeful Ooh. <laughs> there it will say so now it will stop moving around with me and because I talk with my hands I'm really am hopeful that I will be successful at finding that particular um opportunity for me so in the meantime, I'm taking a little break from Kim Hargrave's patterns. I will try to make one of her patterns again. Uh, when, I don't know, but I, I'm grateful for the fact that I got that experience. I learned, again, new techniques. Uh, my knitting is much cleaner now. There's less um, 
there's more there's consistency in my attention uh there it's just elegant so and that's one of my favorite things about her patterns is that they're so elegant so really happy about that plan to do that again where i'm at now i had to reach over to go get it this is a tote that was given to me at a work conference in any other crafter watching this you know that when we get free things we're like hmm is that bad big enough for one of my knitting projects and it is so this is one of my favorite little pouches i've used it for both um hats and but i also use it as notion so it says she works willingly with her hands and i do so this is the notion bag for it i have my glove because uh i'm old so my hands tend to hurt sometimes uh this is uh two blankets i mean i'm gonna be given to a former co-worker of mine who's having twins so the project i'm gonna sh the two projects i'm gonna talk about today um this one is called graying um it's a cardigan that i've been working on according to my rivalry i've been working on it since january 15th um, i'm using barocco ultra alpaca um, it has 219 yards it's 50 percent um, super fine alpaca and 50 percent peruvian um, wool and this is color 6273 super soft it feels so good to work with the stitch definition is beautiful and so this is the pattern so far so as you can see behind me i have per i i bit the i jumped on a bandwagon and i purchased the uh chagu forte uh, knitting needles because i already mentioned before i absolutely love my knitter's pride um knitting needles and my lucky um knitting needles please don't judge me i can't i have phonemic awareness issues uh but anywho um love the other two uh, interchangeable sets that I've consistently used and I love the experience I've had with my different fixed needles as well but one thing I have noticed that I tend to do better with my chagu I have uh, about four or five fixed um, chagu knitting needles and I've had nothing but positive knitting experiences with that those and my fixed um, knit picks have been the two that have consistent uh, because when I was new to knitting, I would use the prim, um, and not, they weren't interchangeable, the prim um, fixed needle, knitting needles because they have the little tips at the end. And I like those because when you're a new knitter, they, it was easy to go into my stitches and really learn the techniques of knitting. But I no longer like to use those because it was hard for me to push the yarn up and down the, uh, what is this, the cable. So I uh, when I first again going on to that woman's I should know her podcast I've watched it several times I think it's you for yarn but I was watching her again it popped up on my YouTube feed and I was like oh, I'll check it out and she was uh talking about these new Chagu knitting needles the forte and I was like those look stunning I mean they look just like my kabaz but they're wood and I like wood needles um, I find that they're better on my hands, even though I can, I, I do better stitch definition because I have been dealing with, um, I'm dealing with information in my hands and in my wrist, like, uh, and I had trigger thumb as well because of the way I tension myself, I press down too hard. So all that said, I purchased the knitting needles and I definitely hear what people are saying in terms of feedback that, um, it can catch right here. But I find that it doesn't do it with um, the yarn. I haven't had that problem so far with this particular yarn. The other thing I really like about these knitting needles uh, is the point. I Chagu is amazing at doing the perfect tip. And I'm telling you, as someone who's new, who sometimes has difficulty getting into my stitches, especially after I'm doing a cable, man alive. Ooh, this gets in there so well. I have such a good time. I've been having such a good time using them. So my pledge to myself, since I did spend a significant amount of money, the price on those knitting needles range between 300 and 350. And because they're in such demand, you know, people can mark out the price. And the people who I purchased it from, I'm going to move out of the frame for a second. The, um, 
the online local yarn store I purchased it from had increased the price by 50 bucks. It was hard to find them for 300 because initially I pre-ordered them, but then I was feeling so guilty. I was like, oh my God, I spent $300 on knitting needles. Like who does that? I don't have that type of money. And so I was like, cancel the order. Don't do that. And I canceled the order and I felt ooh better. Then people on the interwebs started showing pictures and videos of their new Chagu uh, ebony steel tip knitting needles. And I'm like, I want them. And do I need them? No. Um, but oh, they were so beautiful. And I, so I had to. Um, gray is my favorite color. It's in almost every thing I like to wear to the point where it became, uh, my friends did an intervention to help me brighten up um, my wardrobe. Uh, but I absolutely love them so much. I do have a collection of items that keep everything in place. And I can honestly say that I am intentional about using these items. I make sure I use the pen, I use the scissors, I use the gauge um, when I, especially when I do a gauge swatch with it. Uh, I have my, this wasn't included, but I was at some hotel uh, for a work conference over the summer and they had emery boards. I was like, oh, those are perfect for knitting. So uh, I took it with me. So I have that. I love this little case. It has all the little notions I need in order to be successful with any knitting pattern that I need to do. And then this little zipper has additional little things I need, including my favorite. I love these things. So I'm not a person who uses a cable needle. Um, I tried, found it to be a little wonky, like gets in the way. And I end up dropping stitches every time I do it. So then I tried um, cabling without a needle and had some success and some failures. The Zig, Ziggy, the Zig, I think it's called Zig Hat. Yeah, because I confuse it with the Ziggy. It's called the Zig Hat. Um, Melissa, but um, uh, knitting the sash. Uh, her name is Melissa, the woman who um, does that particular podcast. Uh, she had this yarn shorn for love the color and her description of the texture so i was like hey i'll check it out i purchased it loved it made the hat that she called for she suggested for the um the yarn and that's when i got a chance to practice uh cabling without um the knitting needle and it was perfect it was great and the pattern i'm going to be talking about in a moment uh it has it's a 12 um, stitch cable so it's a little hard to do that so i found that these little circular items is perfect because I just swoop off all the cables onto it. I put uh, the stitches, excuse me, I put the six on there, do my knitting, and then I can put them back on there. And no, you can't knit from it. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't find it necessary to knit from it. Instead, it just, it's just really just, I use it as a stitch holder and it get, doesn't get in the way of my stitches and I do it so frequently that I don't lose my rhythm. So I keep that in there. And then just a little, little tippets saw my little cables and I do have DPNs in there because sometimes you do need DPNs and I do have a crochet hook at the bottom too because sometimes you drop a stitch and I use the crochet method to um fix the ladder but um so yeah that's so this the pattern I'm going to talk about um is currently knitted with my new Chaco and this is what I've done so far so this is like one of those dusters. It's supposed to go all the way down to the person's um, ankles. Um, but the person I'm knitting it for is much shorter than I am. Uh, and so in the weight of the yarn, because I didn't buy the yarn that was used in a pattern, you can actually use bulky yarn or an Aran weight yarn. And I wasn't getting gauge with bulky or Aran weight, but I got gauge with this. Um, and I got gauge with a 5.0 millimeter. Um, I use the ink, the UK or Europe's math. I don't do the US numbers because I haven't memorized those yet because I'm still new to it. So the five millimeter um, knitting needle size is what I got gauge in. And I really like the fabric that it came with because that's something else I'm learning the more I do this. It's not, the gauge is very important. I don't deny that because then you know how much, how many stitches you get and how it's going to fit your body, but it's also about the fabric. And if you get gauge with uh, a garment or an item, but you don't like the fabric, you're not gonna enjoy the project. So what I mean by that, I'll use 
this one in here. Where it is? Oh, here it is. This is an example of it. This particular Oslo hat that I'm making, I'm making another one um, because I'm obsessed with the Oslo hat. It's like my favorite knitting pattern for fingering weight yarn. I never thought I would get into, ooh, I really tangled this up. I did not think I would get into using fingering weight yarns because I didn't think I had the patience for it, but man alive do I absolutely positively love knitting with this. So initially, this this pattern calls for um, crafters or knitters, whatever you wanna call us, to uh, use a 3.0 um, knitting needle and I'm going a little slow right now but that's okay um, but I didn't like the fabric at all and I'm like I know I'm not gonna get gauge if I use not that I actually measure gauge when I make hats which is another story for another day um, so I'm like I really am not as worried about the gauge I'm more concerned about the fabric because I made hats i.e. the Kim Hargrave's fog where I got gauge using the knitting needle and hated the fabric like it was just too tight and I'm like uh, maybe if I um uh what is it blocked it maybe it would come out a little bit better but I just I didn't like that texture at all and I'm like if I don't like it before it's blocked I'm definitely not gonna like it after it's blocked at least that's been my experience it's only been one pattern where I've had that opposite experience and that's been my dingley dough where I made a lot of mistakes and so I, I think I had to force myself to like it and the mistakes were not on the pattern designer. It was 100% myself. Hence, you should not knit when you're distracted or when your six-year-old is jumping on you talk, singing songs. Anywho, um, so with this particular um, hat, I didn't like the fabric that I was making. So I went up a needle size um, for this. And I really, I know you can't really see it from back there, but I really liked the fabric. I liked my stitch definition. But the mohair, it just really pops out like you can still see the different colors of the yarn so this yarn is called Patrick Knits and so this is what the yarn looks like caked up and it's a sock weight yarn and I'm holding it with a uh, Sweet Georgia's uh, Silk Mist and um, which I got from a local yarn store so this is what the Silk Mist looks like so this yarn um, this is why I also have to take into consideration the fabric because this is a great example of it. This is my third Oslo hat. Yeah, because I made the white one, the Sweet Georgia one, the Mad Hatter one. This is the fourth one, the Saint pa the Patrick Knits one. And then I have another one that I'm using with Hedgehog Fibers. Um, I'm doing that and I'm going to hopefully, I'm going to do some more because I had some yarn left over. I think I'm going to make a multicolor one too. I'm absolutely obsessed with that pattern. So I digress. Uh, so my long story, uh, this is a very long journal that I'm keeping. I liked these, um, um, I like the fabric made with the 5.0. So I started this whole journey and had some second guesses about this pattern. So let me tell you about this pattern. This is the grayling pattern. Definitely loved the way it looks on there. If I can insert a picture, I would, but I'm not at that skill set yet. I loved these long, wide cables, and the woman who I'm making this for, she also loved the pattern too. She wanted something long and drapey, and I'm like, oh, this is it. So, uh, started it, was having some success, and was second guessing myself along the way. So, it was success and second guessing myself at the same time. So, it was slowing the process. So then I finally went back and looked at the pictures. I was like, oh, the shape I'm making, because the way you start at the pattern, you don't start casting on for the entire body. You you do increases and the increases has it go out into this like a uh, triangle shape or bell shape, um, if I'm being truthful. And I was like, I never had that before. And I'm like, this is supposed to be a cardigan. This is like, I've never done this shape before because my only cardigan experience has been Isabel Kramer and Petite Knits. And so this is, again, me having to recognize there's other ways to do things. And although Petite Knits and Isabel Kramer have very similar mechanics in making their cardigans, that doesn't mean every designer does. So once I got over myself, um, I just kind of, I'm like, I'm gonna trust the pattern and I wanna credit uh, Jana um, from Kim and Jana for saying like sometimes you just gotta trust the pattern that is gonna come out especially if you understand it so I did and it started to come out really well and it finally clicked to me um, that 
you do the bell and then you're going to pick up stitches and then it's going to go over and it re reminds me of the hoagie Lata um i forgot her last name but she's a knitwear designer who has uh, this one pattern where there's a cable that goes down again i can't remember the name of it i'm really great at this aren't i um but anyway you have to pick up stitches in this funky way and so that's the same thing with this particular pattern you pick up stitches um once you do enough uh, increases for the back and you reach to the, that point then you stop and you put your your stitches on hold and then you pick up stitches for the right shoulder and you basically go down the right shoulder and you do all the business with that and then you put the stitches on hold um, almost at the same step as the back and then you pick up stitches for the left side and then the left side I did oh the left side came out so dope I was like oh my god I am I am crushing this and it was really nice and I was like oh my gosh then I messed up so I had to go back in frog it and fix it and the mistake that I made was so simple I didn't really need to go back and fix it but I, I forced myself to do it so I went back and fixed it and was really happy with what came what came out oh goodness I hope this is not something that's pulled out and so I um I did do that so I fixed it and was able to frog it and go again. And then I noticed um, an issue with it. And you can't see it uh, anymore because I fixed it. I had such great success with, um, with one side of the shoulder, but the other shoulder didn't come out the way I wanted it to in one particular section. So I went back and forth with myself to, um, because this side, the left side came out perfect. And I went back and forth with myself on the right shoulder. I'm like, should I just take out all this work I did and frog it? And, or do I try to enhance my skills by, um, not steak it, but uh, I don't remember the word. They talk about it a lot on knitting podcasts, but basically I cut, I did some unraveling, I knit it up to a new point and then I graft it. There it is. I graft it together. And when you get really up close, you can see it. So here, I'll bring you closer. You can see it a little bit. But the way that the yarn falls, and then I blocked it a little bit. Not a, a deep water block. I just did a little bit of a spray bottle. So here, here's one piece of it. You can't really see that. But in my mind, it looks so much cleaner. And I'm like, I, I'm glad I did that. Um, can I go back and fix it some more? I can, but the way that the cables fall, it really blends in really well together. And I'm glad I tried that technique. Um, and I'm not gonna go back and fix it again. So anywho, once you get your, your left shoulder and your right shoulder the way you want it, then you start knitting front and back again with all the pieces connected. And then you knit to a second, certain point until the underarm hole. So this is where, again, sorry to distrust the pattern because um you can see it a little bit on this side because i'm about to i'm about to pick up stitches here i was like good lord that is a huge arm opening and this is where i was talking to two people on my shoulders i have to remind myself that some of the patterns that i've done where i felt that your arm um arm opening was perfect is too small and I have very chunky arms and I know this sweater isn't for myself, but I try to use my body as a model and I'm like, I couldn't fit this. And then I looked at my sweatshirt, like this one, for example, and I was like, oh my God, that is a really large arm opening. And she wants like a sweatshirt like that she can wear like it over or something else. And I had that moment of like, oh, so I put it on and I was like, wait, I can actually wear this with a t-shirt because I always second my second guess myself with the armholes and my armholes end up being so much smaller and I can't wear it with really anything. Like when I wear my knitted, some of my knitted cardigans, and it's not like I have a lot, I only have three, uh, two of them, I really can't wear with a normal t-shirt. I have to wear it with a more fitted shirt that sticks close to my body. Otherwise it gets really bunchy here and it still feels a little uncomfortable because I did not, um, I just, I did not take my movements into consideration and whatnot. My Isabel Kramer cardigan is the only one that fits fairly well. Um, and I think it's because it's uh, a super wash yarn that tends to move and grow with your body. At least that yarn feels that way. That's what I'm telling myself. So anyway, 
had that moment of crisis like oh no I did this do I have to knit this again because by this particular point I'm in this like four, three going on four weeks and I've never taken this long to knit a garment before I'm I'm a pretty I shouldn't say I'm a fast knitter uh I just find that it only takes me three to four weeks to knit a garment and this is the first time it's it's going to take me longer because clearly I'm not finished yet so um once I got over myself and I tried this on and I had that moment of like, oh, I just decided to go for it. And I did a beautiful job picking up stitches on the left side. And yes, I'm giving myself that pat because this is the best I've ever done picking up stitches for a cardigan before. It's it was it was it's seamless. I'm like, did I really do that? Was that someone else? But then I got to the cuff and the cuff was ugly. Now, when I was knitting the cuff, I'm sitting on a plane and. Um, next and I was sitting in this crunched up position so and then my DPNs kept dropping and I just like it was not a good experience but I kept plugging away and I should have stopped um because it came out ugly the stitches were all like going like this instead of like this uh some loops were wide where other like stretched out the yarn I didn't tension my yarn well enough so you can see it like pull out whereas others were just like too tight you couldn't even get into so I unraveled it yesterday because I just finished um I just did I did a full skein for the body and I'm playing yarn chicken right now because I have two of the uh hinks left that I got a cake up and I have two cakes yeah oh yeah I have two cakes and it's supposed to be a duster and I still got to do the bottom ribbing and then I got to do the collar um, and that has ribbing all the way going up. So I know I'm going to need at least a full skein in order to do the ribbing properly because it's a pretty wide um, brim on that. So I, I'm playing yarn chicken. So I've knitted this much of the body, which uh, when I put it on, it goes down to my butt, which is the longest cardigan I ever made, which is amazing. I'm telling you, if you don't like it, I'll take it. So I'm going to do the sleeves now. And I figure whatever I have left over after I do the sleeves, then I'm going to do uh, hopefully one more skein into the body and then I'll start the ribbing at the bottom and then I'll rip it up to the top because I don't want to buy more yarn uh, for this because technically when I purchase the yarn, this is where my inexperience comes to place. I purchased the yarn doing the math for a medium and decided to cast it on for a large. Yeah. So... I'm redoing the cuff of the sleeve and we're not having good times. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, I'm not that bad at one by one ribbing. Um, it's actually, um, I can see why many people have it because it can be pretty meditative um, in terms of knitting. Um, but uh, we are not having happiness with this. I don't know why I can't get into my rhythm of this, but the struggle is happening, so I'm going to keep plugging away. I think I finally found a little bit of flow because, as I said, I frogged this, the cuff, last night, and I don't think I went back further enough because uh, it, it just it did not, um, part of the cuff was still in the pattern, and the other part of the cuff was in the transition from the pattern to the cuff. So my frogging was not very good, and I should have just stopped. It was 10 o'clock at night. I was tired, um, had a long day, had just worked out. I was in fatigue mode. I'm almost 42 years old. I can't stay up past 10 o'clock. When I'm up past 10 o'clock, I look like a zombie. But I, I was trying to finish the body and I finished the, oh, with the, finish the skein and I finished that and I should have just stopped. But instead I was like, let me go ahead and frog the cuff because otherwise I'll never do it. So I wish I had not done that because I think I would have did a better job frogging. And then um, I, I'm, you're supposed to have 70 stitches for the cuff and I had 90. Then I had to do the decrease and my decreases were looking awful in the knitting um, in a rib stitch. So I decided to frog it again and do the decrease from doing one more row of the... Um, excuse me one more roll of the pattern and decrease there and then do the one by one ribbing and that came out a lot better but again um 
it's just been a little hard with these knitting needles to get into the stitch and I don't know if it's because I'm so used to the chagu that I, I can I just feel much it's easier to get in and out and although the chagu and the the tips are actually I feel like the the wood ones are a little bit more pointy than that but I don't know why I found it easier I, I have a really easy time with these um getting in and out of a stitch and whatnot but the struggle is real, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep going along and see how it comes out, uh, and hopefully hope for the best. Um, so yeah, that is, those are the two big projects I have going on in my life, um, that are on my needles, actively on my needles. Um, I'm going to put this to the side because I want to, I want to end with, uh, the knitting needles that, uh, I'm in love with. So Here's the story about this. I, I, a coworker and I, one of my coworkers is an amazing person who filled out a survey and an application on behalf of our school to allow us the opportunity to pilot one of the new AP courses, AP African American Studies. Long story short, short, she volunteered me to be the teacher to lead this launch of the course. I gladly accept and have been having an incredible experience with it. Like it has done so much for me personally and professionally that I'm in so much gratitude for to her for giving um putting this into my my life so I want to do something special for her so I made her a sweater um the hoagie Lopatelli. I think that's how you say hoagie Lopatelli's um a, a hoagie Locat a Locatelli sweater uh again the name of it escapes me but it, it's a beautiful um a stocking net sweater with a cable down the middle and down the middle in the front and the back and it's knitted in a cool way that I've never done before where you do the left side and you like you start from one side and then you you start with the back and then you uh, pick up the stitches and then you do the front very similar to my cardigan and then you do the exact same thing on the right side and how it's joined together is through the cable and so I knew that the tying of the cable wouldn't work so I did uh I did another thing to braid it together uh, because I just figured it would be better and it gave, gave it more stability by doing that. And I saw others who have knitted the project do that, so I took their lead. So anyway, when we were in a yarn store, uh, because I, in the past I used to pick the yarn for people that I knitted projects for and found that they weren't using or wearing the stuff I gave them because it's the yarn that they didn't like. So now I bring that person with me to knit the yarn. So while we were there at the my the local yarn store near our job i got this beautiful huge tote bag like this is a sweater tote bag this is perfect for a sweater so it's beautiful it has this beautiful design on it so i might get it tattooed hmm. beautiful design on it absolutely love it um and because i buy so much from that particular store they gave me uh, a lovely discount where it only cost a buck it was a dollar and change so i'm like yay um for that so i decided that i was going to knit um my first uh what is the designer's name it's called sweater number 19 um and it's by my favorite knits what's her name yes my favorite things uh knitwear and I, I can show you this because it doesn't have any of the pattern um, information, uh, how to do the pattern. But this is what the pattern looks like. Get a little closer. And this is the actual, what I have going on so far. Ooh, it's so beautiful. So I'm knitting this for the, um, by Casey, um, the woman, her pocket. I am so bad at this today. Um, so she's doing this bougie sweater cow. And so I was like, oh, my sweater 19 is perfect because it's my first time using a merino non superwash. Um, and it's from Knitting um, Olive. I had initially purchased this yarn for a Isabel Kramer pattern I was going to do, but I just didn't think that yarn really would go well with that pattern. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna put that pattern on hold because I, be honest with you, I purchased that by accident. I saw another Isabel Kramer cardigan that I really wanted um, more than the one that I purchased. And I ended up purchasing the Ela pattern instead of the one I wanted. 
it happens we all have done it so now i have the ela pattern don't know what yarn i'm going to do with it um and it's a lace um, in the front of it it's lace and everything else is stocking it and it's i think it's like more of it for me when i look at it it would be great for like a, a summer or fall um but i don't have any yarn that will go well with it i don't want to look, use like a woolly or wool based yarn for it i really want to use like a cotton blended with merino and i haven't been able to find a yarn for that but there's others plenty of the other makers have used it for um, using wool so i am going to give the pattern to a co-worker with the yarn that um i think might go well with it um as well it's not what i had envisioned but i think that that person will enjoy it and if they don't it's okay but anywho my knitting for olive yarn is going in my sweater number 19 and at first I didn't think I was going to like this um, yarn which is another reason why it took me a while to get started on it because it's d a different texture than what I'm used to and I thought it would make my skin really itchy and it's not I put it up against the most sensitive part of where I usually have irritation and so far so good um, and it's coming out really well like I feel pretty badass <laughs> if I do say so myself so look at this stitch definition I mean for someone who hasn't been doing it for very long I'm really proud of myself so um yeah this is um this one is uh, hibernating slightly because I need to finish this cardigan and so as soon as I finish the cardigan I'm going to get started on this and then when I get restarted I should say on it and then when this finishes I'm then going to do um my sienna pullover and my uh dravenate knits uh every day sweater i'm gonna do both of those as i realize i have six andrea andrea mari patterns but i haven't knitted any of them and there are other patterns that she has out there and my thing is i need to actually do one of these women's patterns before i keep purchasing of them otherwise i only have a kim same kim hargay's experience uh because like i both uh, uh i purchased the throwback was desperate in trying to do that pattern and decided not to knit with it because I didn't the reason why I didn't knit the throwback cardigan is because I am not happy with um the main color that yarn the yarn I selected for the main color um so what are you gonna do uh so yeah that's what's happening right now I showcase that's my Tunisian crochet um throw that i have over there that's um a courtesy of tony lipsy in her uh, tunisian crochet book i am um, knitting one of the patterns there as i said this is it's called the grayling cardigan um it's a knitwear designer fairly new uh, if you type in hashtag grayling cardigan on instagram it will pop up and then there's a link that would bring you to her rivalry um, shop where you can purchase a pattern if you're interested. There's not many people who have um, purchased it, but I'm telling you, it is a easy knit. Um, and it's one of those that you can engage in social interaction with people while you're knitting it. So it's pretty awesome. So thank you for listening, um, doing these vlogs are really helpful in like getting my thoughts together about what is my passion and crafting is currently my passion and it brings me too much joy like so much joy and I genuinely at least two three times a week make sure I say I give thanks that my I know how to do this and um that I can do it for others too so excuse excuse the dry face and any items you may have seen on my nose and I hope that you continue to have happy knits and happy crochet and stay tuned for the next episode.